Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video I am once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comments section of one of my videos. And for today we are looking at another small ship and this one is called the PDE Cambrian SPCH MK01 which is this lovely thing right here. So this is a small block ship that features enough thrusters to get you out of an atmosphere and well into space, along with a fairly sizey interior, featuring a lot of containers and a lot of spare parts in case you take damage in combat. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, there it is. This thing is 2,782 small blocks using the Wasteland, Heavy Industry, Sparks of the Future, and Warfare 1 DLC packs. So there we go with that, and we've got all the nice information about it on the Steam Workshop page. So giving that a thumbs up, what we'll do is have a quick look around the outside, then a quick look at the interior, and then we'll test its fate against the deadly re-entry mod. So at the very front here, this is what we get. We've got ourselves a lovely glass cockpit where we can view our control seat, which is how we're going to fly this thing around. Now you might not be able to make it out from here, so we'll zoom in a little bit, but we've got LCD screens galore all the way around this window telling you absolutely everything about the controls on every single tab. We'll come back to that a bit later. Just above that we've got two spotlights to light up the darkness and just below that a lovely camera to make sure we can get a clear view right in front of us. As we were to move around to the side what we're going to see is a couple of lights, just some standard static lights and then of course we've got our blinking red light with a blinking green on the opposite side. As we were to move along the body of the ship, we've got a doorway to get in and out of the main interior, which is where your passengers are going to sit, and how you're going to get in and out of this ship. If we were to continue along, we can see a solar panel sitting right at the top there, as well as a landing gear right at the bottom, with some nice use of our letter blocks, spelling out C-A-M. Moving all the way along onto here, this is our hydrogen thruster pod, which has made some very good use out of our barred window blocks, just acting as a little decorative pieces to cover up the end of the nozzle. That's been joined onto the ship by this white section right here, and we can see another small hydrogen thruster to help out on our left and right, right there. If we were to continue around the side, what we're going to see is a couple more lights, and once again our blinking red light with another blinking white light. A few more hydrogen thrusters on the side there, with a few more letter blocks adding as a bit of decoration. And as we were to come to the back of the thruster pod, what we're going to see is the same setup as the front, some more barbed window blocks just going around this side of this hydrogen thruster, and then another doorway. So the doorway here and the one on the opposite side is how we're going to get to the gubbins of the ship, how we're going to control our O2H2 generators, our oxygen tanks and all that, with a manual button. But yes, the door will open up and we can get inside where we've got a button for the O2 tank right there, some gyroscopes going along the wall. We look around over there, we've got another button which is going to be for the depressurization of this section and we can repair up anything if it took damage. If we were to move to the very back of the main body, we've got ourselves a connector with two spotlights to make sure we can easily dock this up in the dark, with a camera right below it, and a merge block to securely connect ourselves if we need to. Just coming around to this section, this is the door on the opposite side, where we do have a slightly different setup, but there is the O2HU generator we saw earlier, and we do have a button for our battery right there, and then turning around we've got our O2HU generator on and off, right there. So it's very nice. If we were to come all the way out of this and start moving down, there's our landing gears to drop ourselves on. We've got a beacon hidden behind some glass blocks, which is very nice and very neat way of hiding it up. Another blinking light, and another connector with two spies and a camera. As we were to move towards the front, we got some more good use of our letter blocks, spelling the PDE cam, and we can see one hell of a lot of hydrogen thrusters, which are only there to help us on a planet. Once we're in space, we can turn these off and simply use our side thrusters to get around. But obviously this section right here, we've got a hydrogen engine for some additional power in case the battery is needed, or maybe your solar panel took damage, and there's an air vent to suck in any kind of oxygen from the surrounding areas to refill your tanks. There we go with that. And if we were to move all the way up and above where I'm standing, We've got some more lights, just lighting up the ship and blinking. Our ore detector and antenna to make sure we can go up to asteroids, or maybe just scout around the ground, find any kind of precious resources. 
a remote control block which is going to be very useful in case you get left behind by the ship for some unknown reason. And there is a solar panel for some renewable power. Moving towards the back of the ship we've got a lone gatling turret which is very nice to help you with any kind of pesky drones or pesky pirates that try to ruin your day. And all the way over to here we've got some bar window blocks which will go all the way down to the rear room where we can see a battery there and how much power it's got thanks to those green blocks. And there we are at the back of the ship. So it's got quite a lot of stuff going on with it for such a small ship and there's even more stuff going on with it when we go on the inside. So just grabbing hold of my character we're going to come all the way around to the very back we're just going to open this up just for good measure so we can just walk inside here come in drop down and we can close the door behind us so there we go come on close there we are and in the third person view if i can wiggle the camera around just a bit there we are we can sort of walk around inside here and click all the buttons if we need to as well as repair anything up if it took damage crouching down there's the beacon underneath Opening up the doorway, we won't go to the opposite side because we have seen that already. We will come all the way over to this door and open it up. So there's no double door for an airlock, so you will have to be quite careful when opening up in space. Or maybe just depressurize this area completely and only keep the cockpit pressurized. But that's entirely up to you. Looking towards the back, we've got plenty of seats for your passengers to sit on. And we've got some lovely shelves going on the top, which is our spare blocks. So say if something took damage and you don't have the resources to rebuild it, we can come up to one of these blocks, grind it up, and then repair the associated block that needs repairing. Which is an absolute fantastic idea to have, and very few ships tend to use. I guess we've got some lights going on in the middle here, and then a big yellow door which will connect us to the back area, where we can then access our large cargo container to store a few bits and bobs inside. And that will go off to our O2 H2 generator at the very back, where we saw on those other doors. Turning towards the front here, we do have a air vent down here, which is very nice. Then looking towards the front, we've got a bunch of LCD screens and buttons to press. If we were to look all the way over to here, we've got the Cambrian has some spare blocks just for decoration. They are named spare parts in the control panel. And that's what I was talking about the stuff up there. So we come into here and type in spare. And we can see all the spare parts are right here. So we know which ones we can destroy if we need to and which ones we need to keep. So we've got a programmable block right here which has nothing going on with it, which is very nice that you've left this on here because if you wanted to you could add the auto torn Elot script or something else if you want. A button for the light, on and off, and down here we've got a small weapon rack to store a few bits and bobs in case you needed. On the opposite side we've got another LCD screen which says welcome aboard Jack RPG. The clan cola and snacks you ordered are in the freezer below. I hope you guys have a great trip, PDE. We once again got a button for depressurization inside here, another spare programmable block, a button for the doors on the side that we can press, and now that's opened up on both sides, and we can close it, and down here in the cargo container, as they said, there is my clan cola that I can go and enjoy. Yes, looking up there, we do have a camera to make sure the driver can see what's going on in the back here, in case some shenanigans are happening. But yes, opening up this doorway, this is our cockpit, closing up right behind us, this is what we get all the way around this room. So once again, we got a weapon rack on the side there. And I, I did forget that there is a small block one. And it does look very nice with how it's all been set up. I must use it more in the future. Yes, looking up, we've got a few more spare parts going along our top shelves. And across here, we've got a button for the lights on and off. Depressurization once again. And another cargo container for you to store a few bits and bobs. I want to keep hold of my clan cola, but we can get rid of everything else. There we are. Yes, on the opposite side, that's what we get. Getting into the seat and in first person view, this is what we get at the very front. Looking around, we've got a nice clear view. But to get a better look on these sides, we'll have to use our cameras. Yes, like I said, we've got LCD screens galore telling us absolutely everything about the ship, including some helpful tips at the top. So we've got our ship's weight, our maximum load, and maximum ship weight. Then we've got the Cambrian has 40 extra hydrogen thrusters for planet landings and takeoffs. And that's going to be all the ones at the bottom right here. If you want to look up and over to here, if you are going too fast, you can point the ship's nose up and use our lower thrusters to stop quickly. And that's once again talking about these ones right here. So if you are going too fast, you just tip it up and press spacebar in order to help yourself stop a lot faster, which is very nice. But as for all the controls on the ship, they are very clearly labeled over to here. So on tab number one, we've got our main thrusters on and off. We've got our main gyroscopes on and off. And we've got secondary gyroscopes on and off as well, which is very, very nice. 
because what we get with just the standard gyroscopes is this on the controls. So we do have a little bit of weight on here, but it is a bit floaty. But if you want to whack it up a bit, we can access our secondary gyroscopes. Now we've got even more control. And then we can activate our spare gyroscopes by pressing that. And now we've got even, even more control. So there we are with that. Just turning them off for the moment. Looking across over to here, we then got our extra thrusters on and off, which is going to be the ones right underneath over here. So if I was to toggle that on and off very quickly, there we go. We'll now go on to our secondary hydrogen thrusters on our little thruster pods on the side, which are more than enough for in space, but not enough for a planet. Looking back over to here, we then got our thruster overrides to increase and decrease on 5 and 6. 7 is our spare gyroscope, which we already talked about, and 8 and 9 is all thrusters on, all thrusters off, which is a nice emergency switch in case you need it. Coming over to tab number 2, this one is the bottom connector on and off, bottom connector to switch the lock, and then bottom connector light with a camera. So coming all the way around over to here, this is our bottom connector right here. We can now toggle the lights on and off. We can now view straight down, and then we can toggle the connector if we need to. 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 is going to be for our rear connector and merge block. So coming all the way around over to here, we then got number 5 and number 6 to turn that on and off. We've got number 7 to turn the light on and off, number 8 to view are right behind us, and then number 9 to toggle the merge block. We out of there and return to first person view on our third tab, we then got our power control. Number 1 is our battery on and off, number 2 is for our batteries to recharge, number 3 is for our spare batteries on and off, and 4 is our spare batteries to recharge on and off, with number 5 being our hydrogen engine on and off, which is the one right below our ship, with number 6 being our hydrogen tank to stop power on and off, number 7 being our O2 tanks to stop power on and off, number 8 for our O2 H2 generators on and off, and number 9 for our exterior air vents, which is going to be the one to suck in oxygen from the surrounding areas. Looking over to my right over at these LCD screens, on the tab number 4 we've got our antenna on and off, beacon on and off, ore detector on and off, our gatling turret on and off, and number 5 being our gatling gun to take control of it. So there we go. Looking back over to here, we then got our landing gear to switch the lock, our landing gear to set it to auto lock on and off, and then number 8 is going to be for our landing lights next to our landing gear, with number 9 being our bottom camera view to help dock this thing up. Coming out of that and coming to tab number 5, we then got some controls for our cockpit and passengers. So number 1 is going to be for our air vent in the cockpit on and off, and number 2 is going to be to depressurize the area. Number 3 is going to be for the door right behind us, so you might be able to hear it. There we go. And at number 4 is for our camera at the very front, so we can get a clear view of what's coming up ahead of us. Number 5 and number 6 is going to be for our passenger air vent and passenger depressurization on and off. Number 7 is for our passenger doors on the side, so just moving the camera all the way around over to here. And we'll press at number 7, so there we go. We then got number 8 is the camera to view inside the passenger area. And number 9 is for the yellow door back there to access the large cargo container. We can use this to mediate who is going to access that cargo container. So if you have a suspicious person you're carrying, you can always lock that door and open it if they're behaving. Returning to the cockpit view and looking all the way over to there, my camera lets me, there we go. On tab number 6, we then got some controls for our lights. So number 1 is for our cockpit lights on and off. Number 2 for our passenger lights on and off. Number 3 for our exterior lights. 4 is for our front spotlights. 5 for our navigation lights. 6 for our landing spotlights. 7 for our bottom spotlights, and 8 for our rear spotlights. So we'll to bring the camera all the way around to the very back, we just take a look at the rear spotlights on and off. So there we go. And then just looking around here, we've got nothing else on LCD screens. Tab 7, 8, and 9 is all empty. Almost filled them all up. Very impressed with that. But yes, now we can give this a thruster test. So moving forwards, when we are in a atmosphere at 0.84 Gs, because we are going to burn this thing up once we're done with it. Yes, yeah, so moving forwards, this is what we get. You can just about make it out on the bottom left. We've got some nice speed with this. Coming to a stop, we appear to be equally as fast, which is very nice stuff, and very useful when trying to plan a stop at a station. Moving left, that's what we get. We are quite slow compared to forwards and backwards, but still pretty serviceable. Moving down, that is what we get. We are very fast compared to forwards and backwards. And then moving up, thanks to our auxiliary thrusters to help us on the planet, we are extremely fast, and that allows us to get away from our planet. We're looking at my mouse around, as we saw earlier, with just one set of gyroscopes turned on. This is what we get, a tiny bit of weight on here, and it does suit this size of ship. 
but if you were to whack on all the other ones, it's still not too bad, but it is one hell of a lot more responsive, and generally loses that little bit of weight it has. So what we can do now to finish off this video is of course, let it have some fun with the deadly re-entry mod, where we're just going to burn up into little pieces, and as you can see on the side screen of my, well, on the side of the screen, you can see the heat building up. So we're currently moving up, because we are going to flip ourselves all the way down, and that should get us to burn up quite nicely. But as for the ship itself, as we are starting to fall back down to the planet, it's absolutely fantastic with how it's all been set up. There's a lot of detail going on with it, some very good use of the DLC packs, especially with the bar between the blocks, adding as decorative pieces around the thrusters. Plenty of room on the interior, and we do have that nice bit of defense, which is always warranted on a small ship. So as per usual, there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around with it yourself. I highly recommend you do, because it's a fantastic little ship. And here we go, I just set myself back a little bit and we are starting to burn up. Look at that heat go. It appears that I wasn't quite in the correct place to actually hit the atmosphere. Wow, look at us, let's go. <laughs> 800 heat, 1000 heat, this ship is still fine. Now we're starting to break up. I can't see anything. We need to get out of here. And there goes the ship. It's doing a fantastic job at surviving. Look at that, it's slowly being deleted. It's doing a lot better than the last ship that I put through this. But uh, there we go. And that is now starting to blow up. There's one hell of a lot of sound. And it's just a gigantic fireball barreling towards the surface of the planet. And wow, that is all that's left of the ship. But at least I still got my clan cola with me, which is always nice. Let's just go and consume that up and have a nice little refresh. But yes, that is it for this video. It's a very nice little ship. As per usual, there will be a link to it in the description below, as well as a link to the skybox I'm currently using. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.